Well, welcome to the Botanical Medicine Study Course with me, your host and instructor, Stephanie Georgiev. Thank you so much for sharing your valuable time with me. At the time of the posting of this video, we're in the final week of April, but we're also on Earth Day. And I think one way that we can really get into this global holiday is realize all of the incredible medicines that the earth provides for us. Now, again, we're in the final week of April, which according to some health-related calendars is Cancer Control Month. So in the spirit of the theme of this month and Earth Day, we're going to continue this series on botanical medicines used in the control and prevention of cancer which in many cases is due to our not taking care of the earth and polluting it, okay? So <clears throat> there never used to be as much cancer as there now. And in my opinion, this is because of the pollution that we've done to our home. But thankfully, we can use incredible gifts from the earth to heal cancer, both as standalone therapies and successfully incorporated into integrative approaches to cancer management. So for this week's Herb of the Week, we're going to be exploring a true gem of the plant world, reishi mushroom. Now, way back when, when I started my practice, it was the height of the AIDS epidemic. And what's interesting about pandemics in general is throughout history, whenever there's been a pandemic, there's been an aftermath, which is usually an evolution in healthcare practices. And this was definitely quite true with AIDS. And what was particularly interesting when I started my practice, there were no real treatment options for people suffering with this. And because of the communities that were initially involved, there was a reluctance of the healthcare system at the time, as well as governments to do anything about it. They just were very fine with these marginalized communities dying because they were blamed for getting it. And I'm not saying I agree with any of that, but what it meant was uh, there was quite an underground developed and quite a bit of activism. <clears throat> we have uh, the people, those initial AIDS sufferers to thank for a lot of the modern medicines and also access to alternative treatments that we do now. It's, it's, it was quite, quite a heady time, I must say. And practitioners such as myself were sought out because nobody else would deal with these people. And um, so I, you know, was, I was being educated as well. And I would gather very interesting collections of anecdotal studies and information regarding possible treatments. And sometimes I had, you know, pretty good success. And there was a paperback book then, and I don't know where it is or even can't even remember the name of it. But you could get it, and it had all sorts of information on various treatments, particularly herbs and nutrition, and one of which incorporated reishi mushrooms. And I just found it so interesting because it was based on some of the initial clinical trials of reishi out of Japan. And ultimately, because of these clinical uh, studies and the success of people with AIDS, there are now modern pharmaceuticals for HIV and AIDS that have been based on the chemical constituents of reishi mushrooms. So we can see how important this is for basic immunity. Now, uh, reishi mushrooms, uh, it's the proper Latin binomial is called Ganoderma lucidum. And it's commonly known as reishi. Some of the other nerms, names is varnished cork, conch, varnished conch, not varnished cork, varnished conch. And you can see this beautiful picture in the background. You can see why they call it conch. Looks like a shell. 
Um, the other is lingji, which is the Chinese term, the traditional Chinese term. And this is a red colored species of the Ganoderma, which is a, a, a large species of fungi. <clears throat> and it has a limited distribution in Europe and parts of China where it grows on decaying hardwood trees. Now, wild populations have been found in the United States, in my home state of California and Utah, but these were likely introduced and naturalized. Now, the botanical name Ganoderma derives from the Greek and Latin root, meaning brightness or sheen, and this definitely describes the appearance of the mushroom caps. Now, the Japanese name is reishi, and other words for reishi, and I always love the English translations because it shows the elegance of these languages. It's just so elegant. It's called sage mushroom, and sage meaning wise one, wise sage, not the lovely green <clears throat> aromatic plant, sage mushroom. I also love this grandchild ladle. <laughs> so I guess grandchildren use this as a ladle and departure mushroom. And I have no idea why that's a translation. Now the Chinese name Lingji uh, is made up of the compound Ling, meaning spirit, soul, miraculous, sacred, divine, mysterious, or effective, and Ji meaning plant of longevity. Uh, it also means fungus, seed, branch, or mushroom, but I think longevity is much more poetic. Taken together, lingxi means auspicious plant or divine mushroom or immortality plant, magic fungus, and my favorite marvelous fungus. Now the fruiting body, which means the thing that we see most is, is it always has a stripe on it and it's a russet color and it's uh, about, you know, one and a half times larger than the, the cap. And Ganoderma lucidum is widely distributed in tropical and subtropical rainforest regions in Asia, Africa, and the Americas. And it has been cultivated for a very long time in China, Vietnam, and India. Um, and there's really pretty pictures of these mushroom farms, you know, where these, these little they look like little orange umbrellas. It's actually quite pretty. And it's currently being uh, cultivated quite intensively, mainly because this is such a lucrative plant in uh, Japan, Korea, and China. And it's also being cultivated in Southeast Asia and South America. Um, <clears throat> and there's, you know, all sorts of different trees that they grow on. Now, trying to isolate Ganoderma lucidum is actually quite difficult, which is why you must use the Latin binomial when purchasing any sort of product with the label reishi. And you also have to be careful about sourcing products. And something I enjoyed when I lived in Southern California and Orange County was that it was, a, you know, the the uh, Anaheim Convention Center was right next to where I used to live, and I could just drive or even ride my bike to the uh, whole, you know, the uh, Natural Products Expo. So I could talk with the producers and figure out where everybody was getting their things. But you need to know where you're getting your stuff because it could be something else. Uh, many of the grow your own kits are actually not reishi mushroom, organoderma lucidum. So if you have some sort of university biology department with a mycologist on staff and a mycologist is a uh, expert on mushrooms, this is your best bet. And if not, make sure you know what you're getting. There's actually a bit of competition between Ganoderma lucium, lucidum and Ganoderma sichuanze. Um, and that basically means it's a Chinese variety. Uh, and there's been several consumer testing companies checking out the DNA of various products with the label of Ganoderma or reishi, and they're not lucidum. That's the one you want. 
but there's shiswanze, which is delicious, but it's not what you want. And reishi is obviously a fungi, which is also considered a parasite. And sometimes people in natural medicine don't think anything that's a parasite is a good idea. But actually something that grows on something decaying is actually a very good like cures like for cancer. So that's just something to think about. Now, there are six types of Ganoderm lucidum, and each mushroom is classified by color, and each has slightly different properties. And uh, we have a close-up here. To me, it looks kind of like an oyster, um, you know, what's inside of an oyster, because it looks kind of slimy. But the most commonly used and most potent variety is the red variety. And reishi is the Japanese name. And since I'm most familiar with traditional Chinese medicine as a acupuncturist, and so much of the traditional uses of herbs between uh, Japanese and Chinese culture is very similar. I'm gonna focus on TCM, traditional Chinese medicine for reishi. And this is known in Chinese as lingji. Now, lingji mushrooms have been used in Chinese medicine for over 2,000 years, making them one of the uh, oldest types of mushrooms. Uh, it's the oldest practice use of mushrooms used medicinally. It's not used old mushrooms. It's been used for the longest time. And there were they were originally thought to be an elixir of life and for gaining mortal immortality, which is why all those neat translations of the name are such. <clears throat> and they've been used and valued by Taoist monks for their properties of increasing health and aiding in the development of spiritual experiences and understandings. Now, this is not a mushroom like peyote, where you're going to take this and have these really incredible psychedelic experiences. So I don't know what the, the bunks were doing, or you have to be 20 years into massive meditation practices in order to have a psychedelic experience with lingji. So this is not the herb, the fungi to use if you want to get high. But according to uh, Chinese uh, therapeutics, TCM therapeutics, this is bitter and warm. It enters the heart, lung, liver, kidney, and spleen meridians. And it's interesting, the lung, kidney, and spleen meridians are very much about uh, immunity in Chinese medicine. So that's interesting. And it's used to calm Shen, and Shen is basically the Chinese word for emotions. Um, it tonifies Wei Qi. Uh, Wei Qi is your defensive Qi. That's your first line of immunity in Chinese therapeutic language. It also tonifies blood. It nourishes the heart, supports Shen. Uh, it removes toxicity, disperses accumulations, and that certainly is very important in cancer therapy. And what's also interesting in terms of immunity is it supports Jing, which is the essence that you inherit from your parents, and that really dominates your bones and your, your endocrine glands. Um, and your chi, which is your energy, and shen, which is your emotions. So it's it's really, when you look at these terms of ancient Chinese uh, therapeutic language, and then you see what the modern uses are, it's quite fascinating. Now, in modern use, it's usually called reishi. Um, it's not, you're not going to find uh, something says mushroom of immortality on your supplement label. It's going to be reishi or Ganoderma lucidum. And it's mainly seen as an, an immune tonic. It's anti-allergenic, means if you are an allergy person, this helps boost your immune reaction. So you're not flipping out all the time. It's anti-inflammatory, anti-convulsant. So this shows that it works on the nervous system. It's powerful antioxidant, anti-tumor, 
So it's obviously something you want if you have cancer or recovering or don't want to develop it. Diuretic, it's laxative properties. It's also sedative. Uh, it's also considered a tonic. And it's really, it's used a lot in modern uh, herbal ways uh, for sleep. It's also used as an anti-anxiety. It's also used for cancer and general immune enhancement. Some studies are also saying that it helps increase memory and it's also used for a good detox. And more modern studies are looking at conditions like asthma. Obviously, if it's an anti-allergic and an anti-inflammatory, that would be good for preventing asthma. It's good for uh, dizziness and insomnia and also irregular heartbeat. Now, the chemical constituents of reishi, uh, thanks to, you know, those people suffering from AIDS and the, the pharmaceutical community in search of something that would be useful for these people, there's been a lot of studies of what's in these mushrooms. And this image is from the United States National Library of Medicine. Um, and I have the link there if you want to read the article. It's quite fascinating. And it these, these constituents really promote anti-cancer effects. And there are things called beta-glucons, uh, complex sugars that slow or stop tumor growth. And in, in, if you read any study, I don't care what it is. If you have a study on drinking water, if that's good for you, at the end of the study, they'll say, more, more research is needed. So they always end these things because they don't want to get sued. But um, they say that more research is needed in human studies, but lab studies, which involve rats and also growing cancer cells on Petri dishes, uh, that reishi mushrooms stimulate a type of white blood cell called natural killer cells that target ab abnormal and cancerous cells. Now, the polysaccharides in this mushroom are the ones that provide the anti-cancer effect. And not only do they stop the proliferation of cancer cells, they also stop the blood vessel formation in cancer. And that's really what kind of kills people is the, the tumor basically gets a whole blood, you know, a whole vascular quality to it. And then it starts basically uh, sucking all the blood out of the person that has cancer. And eventually they just, the, the tumor takes over and the person dies. Um, it also boosts immunity. So these polysaccharides boost immunity. There are triterpenes in there that protect the liver. They lower blood pressure and cholesterol. They fight allergic responses triggered by the histamine response. And, and again, they're, they're very powerful in terms of their anti-cancer activity. And you remember in the uh, TCM slide, we said it uh, enhances Jing. And Jing in Chinese medicine is related to bone marrow, bones, bone health. And what reishi does is it enhances bone marrow nucleated cell production. And, it in, and this is where your white blood cells come from. And it also increases your hemoglobin, which is the uh, part of your blood that transports oxygen. And there are all kinds of uh, wonderful um, constituents. And they usually start with a gano for the gana ganoderm and their ganoderic acids and you can see here ganoderal and ganoderic acid b and lucidinic acid b which comes from the lucin it also has riboflavin which is a b vitamin now there are many ways to take reishi and there are capsules tinctures teas and powders um this is an herb that you can take individually. You'll see, you've, I'm sure my longtime uh, viewers will hear me say, yeah, you should take this in a formula and not by itself. But this is something you can take by itself, very safe herb. There's not a whole lot of 
side effects that have been noted with this. And studies uh, base the therapeutic doses from 1.5 to 9 grams per day. And you'll see an effect with that and no bad uh, cautions. A lot of the literature says we don't know if this is, you know, problem in pregnant and nursing females, but I'm sure uh, in ancient China and Japan, women were taking soups with reishi mushroom and they're still alive to tell the tale in terms of their respective communities. Now there are cautions with this, mainly because it's so effective. It may increase bleeding. Now, as with any type of nutrition or therapy that you're going to use, especially if you're undergoing cancer treatment, let's say you're on chemotherapy and radiation, you really need to have a conversation with your physician and pharmacist. And also if you're on any sort of regular medication prescription, let's say for blood pressure or diabetes or cholesterol or whatever. And uh, this lovely herb may increase your bleeding time. So if you're taking blood thinners, this may not be something that you want to incorporate. And it, because it increases bleeding, if you're going to get dental surgery or you know you're going in for any type of surgery, you need to stop your reishi supplements at least two weeks before your surgery. If you were having emergency surgery, you need to tell your surgeon before you undergo, which they usually ask unless you're found unconscious in a car accident. But you know, if you, you have to have emergency surgery, just tell them. Now, if you have uh, any type of autoimmune disease, such as rheumatoid arthritis or inflammatory bowel disease or psoriasis, this may counteract or potentiate your immunosuppressant drugs. So you need to talk to somebody about this. And it also can lower blood sugar. So if you're on any type of drugs for diabetes, let's say you're on metformin, this may make your blood sugar go too low and you faint. Um, if you're on medications for lowering blood pressure. Um, so this is an herb you might wanna take if you're overweight and you have high blood pressure and you're not on medication as part of your weight loss and exercise program, you can start taking this and it may help you there. But if you're on drugs, you need to talk to your practitioner. Now I've included in the program notes, a wonderful blog post on different ways to cook with reishi. And fresh is easier to cook with, but uh, dried can be reconstituted and added to things like soups and stir fries. And you can get the powder and put it into things like lattes, smoothies, and so on. And of course you can make a tea with this and add it as a broth for anything that you wish. Now I've never grown mushrooms in general, never done that. And my dear Ukrainian housemates that I lived with in Southwestern Bulgaria for almost two years are I learned that they're quite experts in terms of forest foraging for various mushrooms. And thankfully, no one died or needed a liver transplant. So obviously, they knew what they were doing. Um, but uh, so far, so good. But I do recommend uh, if you do live near a botanical garden, sometimes there are mushroom courses you can take with experts. So they help you identify and do all kinds of things. And I, as an aside, I'm always inspired and amused as to how um, various sorts of plants attract certain types of people. You have your African violet societies and your camellia societies and roses, the rose society, you know, people that are really into roses, they tend to be very elegant. And the sago palm uh, people are what I would call surfer types that say, whoa, a lot. And uh, the mushroom people, there are societies for mushrooms. And I would say they attacked stoner geeks. And I say that in the most respectful way, but it's very true. And I took a course at the Los Angeles Arboretum 
and mushroom identification. And it was so informative and fun. And it was especially fun going mushroom hunting in the San Gabriel Mountains with PhD mycologist and his school age children. And this four and six year old were finding all the mushrooms while us adults just didn't seem to see anything. And I think it was mainly because they were closer to the ground in height. But I've included a link in the program notes on how to grow them in your backyard. Um, and I'm not going to recommend any sort of kit because I have no experience with that. And also, we don't know if the kits that I am recommending are actually reishi. So you can do your own research in that. So you can see that this incredible mushroom, the reishi ganoderma lucidum is an amazing gift from nature. What a, an incredible gift from nature. And I highly recommend incorporating it into your life. If you are challenged by immune issues or you have, you have a genetic predisposition for any type of cancer, uh, you know, breast cancer runs in your family, colon cancer, lung cancer, this is, this is your go-to herb, you know, it's sort of like your vitamin. And also if you're in remission from cancer, this can be a powerful ally in the management of this disease. So this is Stephanie Georgia saying, thanks so much for spending your valuable time with me. Make sure to check out the links in the program notes. Welcome to all new subscribers. Thanks to those of you who like uh, subscribe and share these videos. I deeply appreciate it. And until next time, be well.